Good morning. Today is Tuesday and it is October 4. And I would like to start our prayer by saying this, calling on the Holy Spirit in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bring in me a Holy Spirit that thoughts may all be holy. Act in me a Holy Spirit that my work too may be holy. Draw my heart a Holy Spirit that I love but what is holy. Strengthen me a Holy Spirit to defend all that is holy. And guard me a Holy Spirit that I always may be holy. Amen. O oh, Blessed Mother, take me and everyone that I'm praying for in the whole world to your womb and make us holy. Help us unite ourselves with Jesus in your womb through the power of the Holy Spirit and the divinity and greatness of God the Father. All in Jesus' name, amen. And we are going to read the gospel. So we are celebrating the feast of St. Francis of Assisi, one of my favorite saints. The lectionary is lectionary 462. And the first reading is taken from the letter to the Galatians. Galatians 1. Chapter 1, verses 13 to 24. I love this. From St. Paul. The sponsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 139, verses 1b to 3, 13 to 14a, b, 14c to 15. And it says, guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. And the Alleluia, the Gospel Acclamation, was taken from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 11, verse 28. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. A reading from the Holy Gospel of St. Luke. Jesus entered a village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary, who sat beside the Lord at his feet, listening to him speak. Martha, burdened with much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left my, me by myself to do the serving? Tell her to help me. The Lord said to reply, in reply, Martha, Martha, you are so anxious and worried about many things. There is need of only one thing, and Mary has chosen the better part, and let it not be taken from her. The Holy Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Oh, Jesus Christ. Beautiful. I will, this is, um, since it is the birthday of, the feast day of St. Francis, I would like to read this is in Tagalog because this is the first this is what I have learned to pray growing up ang hamon Panginoon gawin mo akong kasangkapan ng iyong kapayapaan kapag hasikin mo ako ng kapayapaan saan man may alitan 
ng pananampalataya saan man may alinlangan, ng pag-asa saan man walang pag-asa, ng liwanag saan man may kadiliman, ng tuwa saan man may kalungkutan. O Diyos na Panginoon, ipagkalob mong higit kong hangarin ang makaliw kaysa aliwin, ang makaunawa kaysa unawain, ang magmahal kaysa mahalin, sapagkat nasa pagbibigay ang pagtanggap, nasa pagkapatawad ang pagkakamit ng patawad, at nasa pagkamatay ang ating pagsilang sa buhay na walang hanggan. Amen. At babasahin ko ito sa wikang Ingles. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope, where there is sad, darkness, light, where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled, consoled to be understood as to understand, to love as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born again to life eternal. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, yesterday I sent you a long email. Because I was so fired up with um the thoughts that came through me the whole day. Thinking about asking for mercy. And am I really doing it? You know, and how many of us are really doing it? So I intend no harm, but it is just sharing my thoughts, my faith, and my desire. For holiness. In 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 a way, I am encouraging you to do them as well, because that's what we are called for. You know, I am not. I am not the greatest person to speak of it. I am not the perfect person to speak of it. I have no education to tell you more of it. But what I know is it's being revealed to me and it is my role, it is my task to share what I am given. It's it's hard if you will, in, in this world, in this world, the truth is nobody will speak of anything that I am doing because it is scary. Um, one thing is people always think of what others would think of them. But I have left that road long time ago. The fear of what others would think of me. I have left that road long time ago when I am pained by what others was talking, speaking of me, I have left that road again. I have left that road, but it is not on my own power. It was a gift that was given to me that I just woke up that I am not feeling disturbed by any of anyone's thought or words. You know, people will talk to you about things that could harm you or 
insult you or even praising, you know, when you're when I'm being recognized. I speak gratitude that really I am grateful for the kindness, but the word doesn't stick to my heart. Because I know that everything that I am doing, I have offered to God. So the thanksgiving is for him, not for me. Because my works are not mine. It is his through the Blessed Virgin Mary. So I accept the thanksgiving and giving it back to him. And it is... The road to holiness, it's a hard task to do. That's why there's a prayer of St. Francis to make me an instrument of your peace. There's the prayer of St. Teresa of Calcutta, do it anyways. There is a prayer of humility. Which will be, which is asking us to forget about ourselves and make it known that the way we live, the way we speak, the way the everything we are is of God, and the role is to bring back to God the glory that He is through our actions. And become an instrument of his love, his hope, his faith, um, the greatness of who he is. And that is by what we are doing right now. And this is actually part of a plenary pledge that I made. I really wanted to do the four, four the plenary indulge, indulgence of how beautiful it is to be able to have your sin washed away and all of the temporal punishment also to be sanctified and purified and all you will have are holy sacrifices you will have holy trials and challenges to go through the to go through this path and hit the narrow the narrow door. So as part of my my action plan, and we did the first one, which is breathe as the power of the Holy Spirit to breathe in us holiness. I so encourage everyone to do the examine, the examine of Saint Ignatius of Loyola who also a radical, I would like to speak of that. St. Francis of Assisi, St. Louis de Montfort, St. Maximilian Kobe are few of the radical saints. Why do we speak, why do we say radicals? Because they are not afraid to speak. They are not afraid to speak of God's word, St. Paul, to accept your illnesses, to accept your nothingness, and to accept that you are nothing, but you are speaking. You're doing the task that, that God is giving you. You are giving everything you got. It doesn't matter if they call you crazy. For the love of God, I am standing with my sword and my shield because I am God's servant. If my master will ask me to jump, I would jump. That's how much I love him. But I know that my master will only do things. Ask me to do things for the good of my soul. And that is one thing 
that this journey is allowing me to see, allowing me to, to prove to the eyes of many that there is really joy and suffering. You know, people are asking, how do you do what you do? Because of, 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 um, I'm also in the road of paralysis and a lot of uh, my veins, the nerve stop working. And I still go, I still continue. Illnesses are not my excuse to do what I am asked for. I cannot work even if my head, my senses, I, I think I can do, but it is not working. My feet are not functioning the way it should. And it is saddening. It, it is it is sad because I wanted to work. My brain thinks I can work. But the brain and the parts of my body doesn't talk. There is no sensory that reaches my feet or my arms to do what it should do. But that is the joy that I am finding joy through it. I'm finding joy through it. So that's why I am encouraging. Because this could cause a desolation. But because of what I aim to do beyond what I cannot do. is part of the great love for God that you cannot really measure up. You cannot measure how much he loves you. And the least that I can do is do what I can and best of my will and my power so that his power will meet mine, my weaknesses and him taking over. So at night, so how do I do this? So bring in me a Holy Spirit and then I will walk to the bathroom to do my morning wash up. And as I do that, I will plug in my, I will use my phone and start my Holy Rosary. And in the middle, while I'm doing that, it's it's a long, it's like 35 minutes of rosary. I will pray the Psalm 23. My Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Putting in my head that I am the servant of the Lord and I need nothing from, from myself but rest only in the power of God. And I continue my rosary as, an, as till, until I'm done. 45 minutes has left. I already done my, 30, my first mystery for the day while waiting for dairy or cooking, my, cooking the breakfast. I will go with my next rosary. And then we will walk Mickey and I will go with my third and fourth rosary. And I will end up the rosary with the seven sorrows of Mary with Hail Mary in betweens and the three Hail Marys giving honor to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And then St. Michael's Memorare. And then while I'm doing anything, I will plug in the I will plug in the chaplet of the most precious blood and the lady of sorrow, Nubina. So whatever I'm doing, I have that prayer ongoing. And that 
gives me peace even though I have not I'm not functioning well I am doing everything that I can and that you know where I learned all of this today's gospel well when I was young I am um, emulating St. Therese of child Jesus that everything I do, I do for the mission and for the love of Jesus. So I grew up with that. But now, <laughs> I just remember how long, how long, you know, there was none not I I was saying why I'm doing why am I always doing this? From birth I have always been a sickly person. I don't remember a day in my life that I have no pain. I have no struggles. My life was not normal. I was not a normal kid. I was given a time when I was not sick and I was able to work and I had a blast and then got married. But on all of those times, God, God was there. But the energy, the energy that I have right now, the vastness of of my desire was the gospel of Mary and Martha and that is choosing the better part how do you choose the better part how do you know it's the better part we should always seek to find time in silence and solitude every day as to see at the foot of Jesus. So the examen of Saint Ignatius of Loyola will give us that opportunity and you will only do five things. Remember what you have done today, the grace that you have received and request for the grace that you needed for all the mistakes that you have done. Request the Holy Spirit to be with you as you review your day. And then review everything. What you have done from the morning till the afternoon. And reflect. Ask pardon for all the things that you have done. And I actually started writing down my, my scenes. Why? Because I intend to go to confession and speak of that sins to the priest. I write them down because I was really hurt. I was hurting God with what I have done and resolved. What is my resolution? What is my plan to resolve my mistake? What is my plan not to sin again? What is my plan not to avoid that sins and never ever do it again? And the intention of amending my life and I end it with act of contrition and I end my day with the sacrament, the prayer in his, of his spiritual communion. Why am I pushing us to be holy? When I have learned that the greatest frustrations, greatest frustration a man could have is not to be a saint. That 
that was painful, if you will think of it, you will live all your life trying to be the best, trying to do, earn everything that you could have, be the richest man on earth, be loved by a lot of people, be accommodated wherever you go, to wear the, the kind of clothes you want to wear, but miserable after your death. Are we afraid of the sufferings to be holy? Why? You don't want to suffer here on earth and you're willing to suffer the worst suffering hundred times in purgatory. And that is if you will enter purgatory. What if with your molten sin that was never forgiven because you never asked for it, you will go straight to hell and there is no door from hell to heaven. Are you still afraid to be holy while on earth? You know, it's an easy analysis and I easy it's just one plus one, but we are not getting it. God is serious in asking us to be holy. He sent so many people before Jesus, and we still do not listen. We do not hear what we ought to hear. We do not see what we ought to see. And he sent his only son. To be human, sacrifice, die to be human. So I'm asking you to please reconsider my requests and continue to be holy. To God be the glory. Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen.